So it's important so students understand that the activities that they're doing within the course lead to meaningful, measurable outcomes. And those um, uh, meaningful, measurable outcomes are sort of a roadmap for students so that they understand how activities lead to um, uh, sort of their assessment and their assignments, and then how those assessments and assignments support the foundation of the course content and how that attaches to um, the learning outcomes of the course. And really, it's good pedagogy, it's good design, whether the course is online or face-to-face. -face. So it's just good faculty practice. Objectives for a course are probably the most important part of planning your course. Um, a lot of times we take a look at a course and you'll see a list of objectives and students skip right over them and they go to, what do I have to do? Okay, that's one piece of the puzzle, but the other piece is for you, the instructor. You need those objectives and you need them to be very clear to you so that you can plan your content, your activities, your assessments, so that, and your technology choices so that it maximizes your student's ability to learn. So if you quickly write out your objectives or take some from a publisher or your department, take a careful look at those objectives. If they're saying things like develop an understanding of, that's a fine idea, but what do you really mean? Do you want the student to be able to explain to you what that is? Or do you want the student to be able to take that information and apply it to a problem? Or do you want the student to be able to use that information, build on it, and come up with something new? Those are different levels of outcome. So if you have an introductory course and really your goal is to explain, then maybe your objective should be the student will explain critical concepts in their own words. As opposed to a more advanced course where you want a higher level of thinking to come out, you may say student will apply critical theories in the field to real world cases and come up with a recommendation for a solution to problem X. Um, it's important for you to be very clear with yourself about what your objective is so that you can choose the activities and content that align with those as opposed to choosing things that are fun and exciting but really have no relevance to what you want the students to get out of the course. It's very important for faculty to include the objectives in the course so the students are aware of what they're trying to accomplish and achieve. So the objective should be prominently placed in the syllabus and or course information documents. Um, we usually recommend you have a general overview of what the course is, what its intent is, what the students can expect, and then right next go into exactly which learning outcomes you're expected to achieve by going through this course. And then you would go on to you know, what, it's re um, what texts are required, what activities you can expect to do, and so on and so forth rubrics and expectations for grading and, and all of those other decisions that have to be conveyed to the students, but the objective should be right up front. So in my course, I teach fully online and I happen now to teach a grief and loss course. I name them, I list them for students in my syllabus and my learning contract, and then we go so far um, as to take the learning outcomes and break them apart and actually then attach them to the learning activities. So if a learning outcome is, for example, um, uh, students will be able to describe and identify cultural differences with respect to grief and loss or, or death rituals. We then tell students where in the course they can find the activities that map back to that. So it's very clear as to how the activities append to the actual um, aspirational goals of the course. We're not good at doing that, actually. I'm not good at doing that. I did all of um, what I described with the help of my curriculum instructional design colleagues who are very clear with me that, um, uh, for example, the word understand is not measurable, so I have to do better. I have to learn to use um, Bloom's taxonomy, for example, that really helps students understand what we're asking them to do. Uh, so I would say that a pitfall is um, almost the way we were educated. My, so my own educational background stops me from um, being able to really think through those outcomes and the, how they're measured and how they're um, demonstrated at the end of the course. When I taught face-to-face, -face, I would often um, assign books because I thought they were good books and I thought students would get something out of it. And that's 
fine, except it's not measurable and it's not very helpful for students sometimes. And I need to be able to tell them why I'm asking them to do what they do. For example, if it's um, especially important for students to, my class is an upper level course. So again, thinking about that sort of Bloom's taxonomy, those upper level integration synthesis, um, rather than rote memorization or um, um, regurgitation of course material, right? Um, I might ask students to do uh, an original project or do original research or work in groups and that those, um, the outcomes of those activities would demonstrate some of the higher order Bloom's outcomes, right? So it sort of all lines up. The activities line up with the outcomes, line up with the, with the, with the hope, to, again, the aspirational goals of the course. You can do it in text, you can do it in a short little video, and you can say, hey, I'm so-and-so, welcome to my course, I'm really excited, and these are the things I really want you to get out of this course. Um, in terms of planning your course, if you get them, if you get your thoughts clear on what you want those outcomes to be for your students, how do you want the student to be different as a result of your course? What do you want them to take on into life later? Because they're probably not going to remember all the content, all the details, you know, all the questions that were asked, but what are the big things you want them to take away? Um, keep those as your touchstones. Those are going to be your objectives and you're going to get them as clearly defined as possible. Um, you're going to write them in a way that you can see their learning. So um, if you want to know that they can articulate something, you're going to have them do an assignment somewhere along the line where they have to articulate something. Um, if you're looking for them to apply knowledge in some unique way, you're going to want to be sure that somewhere along the line you have an assessment that asks them to do that. So what we usually recommend is you start with your objectives, you get them really clear, really tight, and then you think about what are the overall assessments that you're going to want to get out of that. So you look back to each of the objectives should be assessed somewhere throughout the course and everything you're assessing should point back to an objective. This way you keep it pretty tight. You keep, you make sure that every objective gets assessed and everything that you ask for in assessment comes back to those objectives. Um, what we see sometimes as a pitfall, if you will, is that there's a lack of alignment there. We think we're pointing to an objective, but we aren't. So we say, oh, it's a great activity for them to do this project and this presentation but it doesn't actually point back to your objectives, only parts of it do, so maybe that really needs to be tweaked and looked at a little differently. And then we ask that you look at, okay, here I have my objectives, here I have my assessments that I'm looking for. What activities do the students need to do along the way to get there? What kinds of practice are going to be important to them and what kinds of scaffolds do you need to build in? And then at each of those stages, you wanna make sure that you're giving them feedback that leads them toward the objective so they can be successful on the assessment.